bees, or sea cows, are peaceful herbivores that are today found in the warm waters of the Americas and Western Africa. Although often mistaken for cetaceans, or whales, they are actually Afrotherian mammals, with elephants being their closest living relatives. Manatees, alongside their cousin the dugong, are relics of a once diverse clade called Serenians that peaked in numbers, range, and variety in Earth's Miocene, when the world was warmer, sea levels higher, and the seagrass meadows on which they rely for sustenance more abundant. Luckily for Serenians, seagrass meadows are in no short supply in Chimere. The shallow inland sea that dominates the map of the known world today is comprised of enough seagrass meadows to cover most of the continental United States with a few islands, valleys, and reefs scattered between. The issue that many Serenians face is not a lack of habitat or resources, but competition. They are not the only specialists of this nutrient-rich habitat that has no strong analog in diversity, productivity, or abundance here on Earth. When many Serenians were brought to Chimere around 8 million years ago, the inland sea was just beginning to elevate and fill with seagrass. There was new habitat and they had minimal competition, only with the related Desmostylians, but this was just the beginning. By 6 million years ago, the vast inland sea was much as it is today. A wide range of seagrass and algae species had proliferated into a coastal analog habitat spanning across much of the sea, with waters averaging between 50 and 100 feet deep. Walruses and Cetothea whales brought from the same Miocene harvest were now common, dining on a plethora of crustaceans that called the meadows home. Although this habitat was booming, an arid period hit the wetlands of the known world, and the portal initiated another harvest, this one from Miocene South America. Two genera of sloth, one from each of the great sloth clades, were inclined towards seagrass meadows. Both quickly came to the inland sea and boomed in numbers and diversity. Being grazers who could rest and avoid predators on the many islands scattered throughout the inland sea proved to be a highly successful strategy. They competed with walruses and seals for shore space, but their height and claws allowed them a great deal of success in dominating beaches. In short order, sloths had established themselves and Serenians tended to do best in deeper meadows than sloths, who tended to be bottom hunters and needed coastlines so that they could climb ashore to breathe every 40 minutes or so. Some sloths became proficient swimmers, however, adding further competition. Desmostylians maintained their presence too, growing larger to better fend off both sloths and their predators. Another pair of competitors came not from Earth, but from the East and West respectively. One was the strange Billaruk, a nontherian mammal from the Eastern continent. These multi-ton beasts were one of the first clades to become megafauna after the dynastic extinction. Their asymmetrical heads act as scissors, cropping grass as bulk feeders. Some went from eating grass on land to seagrass, which was much more nutritious and supported far larger body sizes. These came to the known world around 3 million years ago, were already massive, getting even larger as a means of predator defense. The other was a Dicynodont, the Mo Gao, only member of its clade in the known world. It hails from a massive island to the west, referred to by Earth naturalists as the Permian Island for its many strange and wondrous fauna that have been isolated since the namesake period. Little is known of this region, but several marine and flying animals have immigrated to the known world in recent history, implying that it is steadily getting closer to the known world. Parxosaurs, like the Tagduru, also came from the freshwater habitats of the known world. All this to say, Serenians have their fair share of competition. Even so, six species are found in the known world alone, with many others ranging far and wide in the realms beyond. Despite their reputation as slow creatures, manatees of Earth can swim 20 miles per hour when the need arises. All species of Chimera and Sirenians can outpace this due to greater threats of predation. 
The bounty of seagrass led to a robust herbivore base that of course attracted a range of predators. Sharks, mosasaurs, cetaceans, elasmosaurs, and dinosaurs all include Sirenians in their menus from time to time, although not as much as you might think. The Kurojaku is the apex predator of this habitat. They tend to gravitate towards larger game, slower swimmers like walruses, or other bottom punters. If Sirenians can swim out of leaping range, the negatively buoyant dinosaur will slow down dramatically, and they can confidently escape. For this reason, Sirenians typically are safe from these leviathans as long as they can escape the initial charge, and thrive on being one of the few grazers off the king's menu, who in turn competitively excludes other large predators that might turn them into a regular meal. Sirenians graze in waters more shallow than the bottom-ambushing Motomazor and Megalodon like to hunt, the Katabo is a reef specialist, and the common sea serpent only regularly attacks the small species. In fact, their only regular predator is an ancient rival, Hemipristis sara. This giant weasel shark, called the Yakuamon by the Kentorim, grows between 20 and 25 feet in length as adults. Based on fossil evidence, they have specialized in Sirenians since before either was harvested. They thrive in the seagrass meadows by avoiding prey preferred by the resident king, focusing on the Sirenians that are quick to swim out of the Kurujaku's range, but that graze below the hunting range of panther sharks and young megalodon that sometimes hunt in the meadows and target dolphins and cetotheres, feeding on fish and other prey closer to the surface. In fact, this niche is so profitable and lacking in significant competition that Sirenians make up as much as 95% of this shark's diet. Although their serrated teeth are quite ferocious and they are massive sharks, their preference for sea cows is so strong that Kentorim consider them to be safe to swim near, as long as one is respectful. There are six species of Sirenian in Chimere. Three are descended from the same animal, the Taxitherium, although being harvested a million years ago, all are quite derived. Most populous and widespread is the common sea cow, or Amun. These animals are large and generalist, feeding on a wide range of vegetation, comfortable in a range of depths, and are well known to inhabit estuaries alongside the meadows, and even sometimes venturing into deeper waters of the kelp forests. Unusual for this clade, the Amon is a social animal, often living in pods of 5 to 20 animals. Related to the Amon, but specialized in larger and softer species of seagrass more common in deeper waters, is the Amonira. Unlike their larger cousin, they are solitary, and not nearly as adaptable. They are most common in the Crescent Sea, where the water tends to be deeper than the inland sea. Here, they are called the Yogao. The Amunkiko is a diminutive animal, averaging around 3 feet in length, and being by far the smallest Sirenian of the known world. They are also the only regularly omnivorous species, sucking up crustaceans and worms in the area as they munch on seagrass. Kentorim say they are also the smartest of the sea cows, and because of this, they do not hunt the Amunkiko as they do other species. At up to 30 feet long, the largest Sirenian frequently encountered in the known world is the Amukyuk. These tusked giants target the roots of seagrass and other aquatic plants, and their feeding stirs up such a diversity of crustaceans and other potential game that they are often followed by an entourage of small fish, sharks, and cetothair whales. Perhaps because they are armed with a pair of meter-long tusks, they are substantially more aggressive than other Sirenians, known to charge and gore sharks, small mosasaurs, and other predators with little provocation. With minimal fat, dense bones, and thick skin, most Sirenians in the known world are slightly negatively buoyant. This is typical of grazers in the inland sea, as it is beneficial to be able to feed on seagrass without putting effort in staying submerged. This is a boon when grazing in shallow waters, 
but swimming in open waters can quickly become exhausting, as the moment they stop swimming they sink, and minimal fat means that they tend to be restricted to warm waters. All well and good when that's where the food is, and most Iranians are content to stick to this tried and true method. As with most trends, there are exceptions. The Wa'ayuk is a sister species to the Sellers sea cow that was recently hunted to extinction here on Earth. They came to Chimir during the late Middle Pleistocene and had already forsaken adaptations to seagrass meadows in favor of kelp forests, with larger body size and more fat to endure colder waters. Between 2 inch skin and 4 inches of blubber, they are well insulated. They can't fully submerge due to this buoyancy, but as they feed on kelp near the surface, that isn't much of a problem. Floating as they do also enables a much wider expansion over the open oceans, and they are the only Saranian known to reach the polar continent of Kaishel. Living in kelp forests not only provides them with ample food and minimal competition, but it also offers protection. Cetacean predators are cautious as the kelp hinders sonar, and all predators large enough to threaten these 35 to 40 foot giants tend not to want to risk entanglement. Because of this, the social Wa'ayuk lead peaceful lives. Chimerans are their only regular predator as long as they remain in the forest, and even then, boats agile enough to not risk rudder entanglement are small enough that a strike from their powerful tails could prove fatal. With minimal competition and predators, the Wa'ayuk is found in great numbers in the kelp forests south of the known world and many regions beyond. Last, but certainly not least, is the namesake of today's video, the manatee, called the Gao in most Telmed languages. They aren't of the same genus as manatees of Earth, having come through some 6 million years ago, although in appearance and lifestyle they are quite similar. They are most common in the shallow wetlands of the Crescent, although they can be found in most freshwater and estuarine habitats, as long as the waters are warm. Their front flippers retain slight hooves, unlike the whale-like fins of their more common dugong contemporaries, which they use to walk along the bottom of shallow substrate. Competition for seagrass has eliminated many manatee species, and this species has, through a more generalist diet, endured by eating any vegetation nearby. Although they look ponderous, they have minimal fat and much of their mass is skin and muscle and they are surprisingly swift when they need to make an escape. As with other Chimera and Serenians, this thick skin also affords protection, and they can shrug off many skin-deep attacks that might finish off another animal. Although they have more predators than their contemporaries on Earth, manatees still eke out a fairly peaceful life in the denser vegetation of the prolific Chimera and wetlands. Serenians may at first seem ill-suited to the competitive known world. Their reputation as harmless creatures floating idly isn't entirely reflective of reality. They can move and in some cases fight when the need arises, but mostly it's just that they would prefer to be left to their own devices, leading tranquil lives in this wet, verdant world.